Hi guys, this current challenge is called picking numbers. So in this challenge, we're going to receive an array and we need to find sub arrays that meet a certain condition. The condition is that the difference between any two chosen integers inside our sub arrays has to be less than or equal to one. If we receive an array like this, what I'm trying to highlight, we have one, one, double two, double four, triple five. The valid sub arrays would be this first one, 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 two, and two because the difference between one and two is one. And also this one, double four, triple five, because the difference between four and five is one. So they give us an example here. Let's say we get an array like this one. We have six integers, four, six, five, double three, and one. The maximum sub array that meets this condition is this one right here, four, three, and three. So what we need to do in this challenge is find the maximum length of any valid sub array that we can find. For this first example, we would return five. For this sample input, we will return three. And for this one right here, we'll return five. So here's my solution. We have this function called picking numbers. It takes in a vector of integers that I'm calling A. And then the first thing that I'm doing is sorting the vector. If you look at the sample input here, the numbers are not in any order. They are not sorted. It's easier to find valid subarrays if we have all the numbers in ascending order. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm sorting the vector using the sort function in C++. And then here I'm creating three int variables. So the first one here, this len variable, I'm going to use it to store the maximum length that I can find in my subarray as I process my vector. The start variable here is going to help me know what is the start of my new valid subarray. And this num variable is going to count how many valid integers I can add to my subarrays. I'm going to iterate through my vector and I'm starting at index one. So the reason why I'm starting at index one is because now that my array is sorted, I can simply have something like this. The element at index i minus the element at index start. I don't have to use the ABS function to find the absolute difference. The element at index i will always be greater than the element at index starts. Now, why is that the case? The reason is that start is zero at first. So when I say the elements at index start, it is simply as saying the elements at index zero. So any element that I'm processing through my loop, if I subtract the element at index zero from it, I'm supposed to get a value that is less than two. If that is the case, then I will count that as a valid value and I will increase the count of num, meaning that I have found a new value that I can add to my subarray. Otherwise, if I perform this operation here and I get a value that is greater than or equal to two, it means that I have hit the ends of the previous subarray I was trying to grow. In this case, I need to reset the count of num to one and I need to set i as the value of start. So let me show you this in case you guys are a bit confused now. Let's say I'm processing this because i starts at one inside my for loop. Then I will have one minus the element at index start. Because start is zero, we're going to have one minus one. So then i will move to index two. It will be this two minus one. So this is still valid. But then when i becomes four right here and we hit the value four, when I perform this operation, the elements at index i, which is index four, it will be four minus the elements at index of start, which is zero. I will get three, in which case I will enter this condition right here. I will restart num and then start will be equal to i. Now, why is that the case? The reason is I need to start a new subarray from here to continue counting, meaning that this index here, index four, indicates how many valid elements I had in my previous subarray. So then start is going to have the value of i, which is four, meaning that my subarray is going to start at index four, which is this one here. And then I will move here because i will be equal to five at my next iteration. And I will have four minus four which is zero. And we'll keep going all the way until we hit this one right here, which I believe is index nine. So when i equals nine right here, and I perform this operation, seven minus four, because the integer at index start is this one right here. So I will enter my condition again. I will restart num to one, and then this will take effect. I didn't really talk about this at the beginning because I thought it would make better sense if I showed you this example here. But what happens is that I want to store the maximum of two possible values. So I have i minus start. What does this mean? Well, we have here i is 9. 
start is still 4. When I hit this right here, i is at index 9, which is 7, and I perform my operation 7 minus the element at index start, and I get 3, which is invalid. I'm saying len equals i minus start, which is equal to me saying 9 minus 4, which is 5. Now, if you spot the pattern here, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is a valid subarray, just like they had it right here when I'm trying to highlight. So this valid subarray has five elements, and that is how we can find how many elements our subarrays have as we move through our vector. But there's an issue here. If we always update the value of len, we're not sure that at the end of the loop, len is going to have the maximum possible value. So in order to ensure that we maintain the maximum value for len, I use the max function here to say whatever value len already has, if it's less than this right here, then update the value of len to i minus start. If the current value of len is greater than i minus start, I'm going to maintain the value of len. So i minus start is only going to become the value of len if it's greater than the existing value of len. Once we are done with the for loop, we will return whatever value is the maximum between the len variable, which is the length of our subarray that we found, and num. You might still ask why exactly we need num if we are able to find the values of subarrays. Well, think about something like this. Let's say we have an array like this, one, one. At this point, we have one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, seven elements. We need a variable that will be able to tell us if all the values in our vector are valid. And that is what num does. Now, first, before I talk a bit more about num, let me submit this code right now. And we've passed all the test cases, so we're good. Now, let me comment out num. In fact, let me remove num altogether from here and simply return len. Now, let me submit this code. Now, you can see that uh, test case number six fails because for test case number six, we had 100 times the number 66. So it's kind of in my example here, all the values were valid. So our logic here was not enough to capture such an edge case. So that's what the variable num does. Another thing is before you submit this code, if you simply run it, you'll be able to pass the sample test cases. But if you copy this array here from the uh, instructions, so I'm going to check this check mark. I'm going to have nine for the size of the array. And I'm going to have the same values as they have, double one, double two, double four, and then triple five. And I run this code now. I'm supposed to have five because here they say the maximum is five elements. And indeed, double four, triple five is the maximum length subarray. But here we receive four because of my logic above. So again, um, you can restructure this entire code and have a more effective solution if you want so that you don't need to have a num variable and something like this. But I think this solution also helps you get familiar with the max function in C++. So that's why I'm I'm using this technique. So anyway, let me just undo what I did and let me submit this code one more time just to make sure that it's still valid and we're good. So that's it guys. If you like this solution, please subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications and I'll catch you next time.